This is From Shroom to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram. I am your host, Matthew the Ball Bambino. Hiram is not here. And what do we say when Hiram's not here, Trey? Byram. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, uh, I miss you. It, it, it's, it's basically uh, Squad 7 in the building, you know what I'm saying? You know what it is. Ooh. This is. The, the, Rightfully, I'm the, Sasuke. This was <laughs> this was supposed to be uh, the uh, Five Kage Summit, but uh, it's okay. It's okay. Quality over quantity. You know what I'm saying? I got motherfucking. Damn. I got motherfucking core in the building. Here. We got motherfucking Trey. What it is in the building? Trey after death. Courtney K. Kit. Yes, of Top notch. You know what it vibes. What happens every day? We change lives on Tuesdays. Nah, but what what happens every day? Oh, niggas die every day, B. <laughs> Where did my mother's son? The motherfucking. I'm, I'm happy that shit finally getting the recognition it deserved, bro. K K. Paid in full is a great movie. Yeah, it was. What's that? Paid in full. Oh, fire. Yeah, bro. Maybe you want to sell drugs. <laughs> to the end, you know? The homie started. <laughs> Homie start fucking with you, and you're like, damn, is this really my homie? The nigga, paranoia is real. Yeah, nigga got shot, and he was like, damn. <laughs> this is episode, oh man, I said that right, 74 of From Shrooms to Skyrim. Show, not about Shrooms, not about Skyrim. Those are just the motherfucking parameters. And this episode is brought to you by Sandbar, Coconut Grove, 3064 Grand Avenue, home of the motherfucking fish taco, Taco Tuesdays, Whiskey Wednesdays, Ladies Night Thursdays. Over 35 different beers on draft and 22 flat screen TVs, 70 inches, all the inches. And this episode is also brought to you by The Last Carrot, 3133 Grand Avenue. They're open Monday through Saturday, 1030 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Sundays from 11 a.m. to 430 p.m. Family owned, fresh Wholesome Eats since 1975, Sheesh. where they serve garden fresh pita sandwiches and fresh veggie juices. Check them out. The last carrot. Yo, this is a motherfucking Naruto extravaganza today. But before we get to that, we got to we gotta address some things what up? going on in the world. <clears throat> First and foremost... Something happened last night. Well, this well this episode come out Friday. Something occurred Tuesday evening on the Dave and Buster tour. By the way, brilliant tour name. Dave Chappelle and Buster Rhymes doing a Dave and Buster tour. I love it. The next time I see Buster, I'm going to tell him so. After I ask him about this. So, Dave Chappelle was <laughs> tackled on stage. Terrible form. And then, yo, have you seen the pictures of Buddy being taken to the hospital? Yo, that's that all mo- I seen. That motherfucker looked like yo, that shit was crazy as fuck. You don't tackle Dave Chappelle, okay? You fuck with the wrong one. I finally saw a video that was like great quality. Dude didn't even successfully like get him to the ground. Like he tried to spear him. Dave kind of like bushed it off. And then after he got to the ground, he tried to, like, bring him down. Then they dragged his ass to the back. To the back. And then they <laughs> just... Yo, when, <laughs> se- bro, when security, t- when security takes you to the back. 
Dave, Dave, Dave it's Chappelle over got, for you. He got back on the mic. He said, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. Yo. <laughs> they went to the back. Yo, the fact that Chris Rock was in the building. <laughs> yeah, bro. I and know. he got on, on the mic and said, was that Will Smith? <laughs> <laughs> said, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. But that there's something, there's something I want to say about that. So back when that happened, right? Yeah. At uh what was that? The, the Grammys? Mm-hmm. The Grammys, right? Side note, the Grammys was in uh Colombia and I was there. It was lit. That was Colombia? Yeah, it was in Barranquilla, where I was at, the capital. I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know that too. I was there. I just kind of assumed that like it was just like in LA or something like that. I learned that too. I was like, what the fuck? It was in Colombia? Yeah. Like the country? Yeah. Fuck with me, though. <laughs> I swear. Let me double check. You sure it wasn't C- Columbia, South Carolina? No, nah, they said it was in the capital. Let me double check. But when that happened, right, and we talked about it on the pod, I, don't, I forget what number of the episode, but it's the episode called Smackavelli, which let's take a minute to talk about how brilliant that episode name is. It's nuanced. You get it, right? Will Smith smacked him for Jada Pinkett, oh, and I called the episode Smackavelli. Well played, sir. Genius. Thank you. Thank you. Smackavelli. <laughs> what? Smackavelli in it, bitch. And, um, but what I said was well, that sets a dangerous precedent. Because comedians say a lot of things that a lot of people don't like. And it's not okay to physically assault the comedian. You know, comedians are the pioneers on the frontier of free speech. I agree. I agree with that, too. So when Will Smith, over a fucking... uh, a fucking soft core ass joke goes up and smacks, you know, Chris Rock. It's such a dangerous precedent. Precedent. I'm not saying that's what this was about. Like, there's already all kinds of background information coming out. Like, this dude is like one of the like he's like a failed slash aspiring rapper. He's got a song called Dave Chappelle. I saw Talib Kweli posting uh, screen, screenshots that he's also like a Trump supporter. You know. Yeah. Or like it could be related to the backlash of from Dave Chappelle's uh, Netflix special. W I. See, but, with the Will Smith shit, I was on the fence on both sides because I'm a bit ad- advocate for like same shit, bro. I don't like nothing being censored, music, comedy. But at the same time, bro, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Like, what if your wife was like crying late nights every night about her hair, and then boom. Yo, but Chris Rock even said it. It was a G.I. Jane joke, dude. And like and if G.I. Jane looked kind of good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't even like it's okay. not even a diss. Except good. You know what I'm saying? So but, go ahead. The, nothing about that whole outburst made sense to me. Like, you got a girl, you y'all cool, and you say good morning, and she's like, shut the fuck up. You know in that moment that it's not about you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, the the minute I saw it, I was like, okay, there's something else going on. Like it, that was a trigger for Will for whatever reason. But like, I'm not gonna make this about the smack. Like because, there's something because else. the reaction yeah. didn't match. It like it's not like Chris Rock would like you know, you know, Jada, you a bald ass bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you look, you look like the goddamn skinny rock. And, and fuck now, and fuck your man. Now with the history of him constantly going for Jada, I was like, all right, I, there might be something there for real. But the joke was weak, in my opinion. It was fucking mid, like like it was. Yeah, I didn't even it, laugh. It, it was like a, the typical like you know little like Grammy joke. Keep the show going. You know, what but I also grew up on some hard shit, bro. Like we go for the worst, the worst things about you. Like it's gonna be said if you got a fucked up tooth, we're gonna. Joke about your fucked up tooth. Yo, I, 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 I remember a high school that was a motherfucker they called Snaggletooth. <laughs> There's a motherfucker like that in every high school. <laughs> every high school in America got someone with a Snaggletooth? What the fuck is a Snaggletooth? Well, like gang signs. Oh, my God. Damn. 
I'll be mad if a nigga call me Snaggletooth. <laughs> See, that's some shit you might you get slapped for. Yo, my brother, they used to hit me with the hardest joke. That shit used to, he would say it around a new group of people and it, it would hit me hard every time. <laughs> but they used to call me like the cinnamon man from the cinnamon from the Apple Jacks. <laughs> And he was like, do any mind? And everybody just be <laughs> just be dying laughing. I'm like, damn, bro. That's a quality joke. <laughs> Kids is cool, man. I was like, damn. Yeah, that's true. I was like, damn. Yo, there's nothing you can say, so you just got to laugh it off. I'm like, yo, you got me. Again. It'd be in the trenches, bro. It'd be like 30 people we joking on everybody. 30 people joking on you. I'm by myself still down the line joking on everybody. A couple times you want to fight, but you know. Yo, I, I've I've had to laugh so much shit off. But that's what you got to do. You got to laugh it off. But, yo, the crazy part is I, I I I saw this, like, the Dave Chappelle getting tackled or shit in, like, the afternoon. The night before, because I, I, cause when, when I sit there and uh, edit the clips for, like, uh, Instagram Reels and TikTok, I got to watch the whole episode. So I'm like 24 episodes behind. So I was, I literally uh, did the clips for Instagram and TikTok for episode, I want to say 49, whatever the math is on that, uh, the night before. And that that happened to be uh, Anthony's episode, which was right after his first episode, which was right after Marvel's second episode. And so I posted the clip on TikTok. Where like we was talking about, um, cause you know like like it's Anthony, so we we, we uh, so you know, <clears throat> he, like you know where he resides at. So we was talking about the erosion of the ability for like people to di- have discourse without like it erupting into, you know, mm. a whole big thing, and just you know to be able to civilly disagree on things. And in the clip, Anthony's literally talking about something Dave Chappelle said. You know, in regards to free speech, and then, and it was crazy. Like I just clipped that out, posted it, and then I saw the shit about Dave Chappelle getting attacked, which leads me to say, motherfucker, Dave Chappelle, protect him at all costs. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, MVP, and 100%. that motherfucker got everything he deserved. That's what happens. You know, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. <laughs> Like, that right there is how you make an example. Like, you touch Dave Chappelle, you going to get folded like a goddamn cartoon character. Bro, I just want to know what's up with his arm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? I didn't see his arm. His shit was folded. Like, Damn. Like, he was in the, the hospital chair, and his shit was like, bro, I got to find this shit. Show you. Yo, his face is like three different shapes. Yeah, bro. Is he really a rapper, though? I didn't know that. Because if he is, his his career just took off. Yeah, yeah, cause, yeah. Cause like, cause I I, I follow Tyler Quali and Tyler Quali is is vocal about shit. He don't stay quiet, so he been posting about it all day. Like he could like, you know him, you know like him and Dave are like super tight. <laughs> Yo, you ever seen a picture? <laughs> they yet? folded that nigga, bro. That's his arm, bro. <laughs> what the fuck was I looking at, yo? That was a lot. That was a lot to take <laughs> oh in just now. My, my dog got fucked up. <laughs> like that's not lessons. Yo, cause I, I see Bus sometimes and I know like like when I see him in his security, like I'ma ask him. <laughs> like <laughs> God damn. Oh, you know, like off the they got record, some big off ass the niggas, record. For real? Uh like Buzz usual people like 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 they like they got some size, but they like more or less like my size. That dude, that was and, big, and, the baby and, and, and Trey that size. That nigga big as fuck. Oh, that nigga's a fucking bro. What the fuck? He's an anime character. The juggernaut, yeah, bro. Like bebop and rock steady type. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh, that dude's ridiculous. Yeah, bro. I was like, all right, he getting he getting paid very well. But yeah. Niggas don't be giving a fuck. They be trying to still pull up on him. Yo. But Busta don't need security though. I mean, he he does for his name, but like if he wasn't a rapper, like he could have easily been somebody else's security. 
He's, the he's not a small dude. Yeah. For real? I didn't know not that. Not at all. Not at all. Damn. I know he got swole as fuck now. I didn't know he's like how he like six two. He's like he's like six two, six three. Wow. And then he was always muscular, and then he got then he got like swole, and then he put on like dad weight on top of that. So now he's like, okay, move out the way. Well, like I heard that was because you know he was. And then he stopped working out, so that's why he accumulated the weight. Hmm. The world may never know. I mean, the world do know. Like, I, I saw that on the internet, so the world knows. Well, it's true. It's on the internet. But, yeah, like, it's one thing to run on stage, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, motherfuckers run on stage to concerts and shit, football games. <laughs> NBA but games. But to go funny as fuck. to go for Dave Chappelle and tackle, what's your end game? That's what everybody wants to know. After I find out about the arm, I like, just want to know how the fuck. Yeah, like let this be a lesson. Like, if you like, if you go for the entertainer, that's like you're not you're not gonna be escorted off stage. <laughs> it depends on the entertainer. Yeah, actually, because there's a whole culture behind behind Dave Chappelle and whoever Dave Chappelle is with. Yeah. That's why that happened. Yeah. And is there any consequences? Like, we can freely beat your ass to a pulp, and there's nothing that can happen, right? To an extent. Really? Yeah, it's kind of like the cops. Like, you know, you could claim... That force was necessary. Oh, guy was trying to kill us, and then he broke loose, and like, there's yeah, no cameras. Back yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, <laughs> yeah, you can say whatever. You they, they Who's gonna they, stop it? They like, didn't take him to the back on accident. Okay. Yeah. His exactly. arm, his arm didn't get like that. Shout out to the first bodyguard who did that because they they was thinking because you can't beat their ass on on stage like that. It's a big stage. Yeah, that's motherfucking twenty twenty two. You know what I'm saying? Like, Everybody but, cameras out. It ain't but, gonna look too good, but, but my like. Eyes, but like mm-hmm. now it's just uh our word against <laughs> yeah. his word, you know what I'm saying? And he's already demonstrated violence exactly. in front of thousands of people, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Bro. He can tell you to display violent behavior. And that's what happened. Violent and erratic behavior. Yeah, bro. The amount of fucking balls that, that guy had. No, it's not the amount of balls, it's the lack of amount of brains. I don't know, bro. That's some psychotic shit, low key. Exactly, and that's what any anybody could say. That's why I'm gonna whoop your ass behind stage. <laughs> to the uh, damn. At one point, do do you say all right, chill out? <laughs> well, with the ass whooping, dude, you already tackled Dave Chappelle. There's nothing you could say. Yeah, bro. So who do you think stopped it? Like the people who was running it? Because I, I don't like. If I pay you, bro, you got to keep beating his ass. <laughs> like, we got to make it. Like, that video of him with his arm is the greatest lesson that anybody can see, bro. Like, yeah, you can go up there and, and you can go up there and do what Will Smith did. Go ahead. If you're okay with this happening. Will Smith kind of walked away, and it's Will Smith, so you can't do nothing about it. So I feel like that ain't really properly shown. But what if you're not happen. Will Smith at the Grammys. <laughs> oh, my God. Your arm will be like that. <laughs> it's the arm for you. Bro, how the fuck was his elbow this way? That shit was looking crazy. Yeah, bro. That was like some ESPN shit. Then somebody in the comments was like, nah, it's just how they handcuffed him. But it doesn't even fucking make sense, bro. So they handcuffed. I can't even do that like this. I, lo- I love these social media analysts. Yes, bro. They know everything. Like, tell me all about your law enforcement experience. <laughs> yes, bro. And how many asses you whoop behind stage. Yo, the thing how about motherfuckers explaining the going back and forth on social media is that they got all the explanations but no reading comprehension <laughs> to even, like, motherfuckers be arguing. Like, I'll read a back and forth, <laughs> and they both we be saying the same shit. don't know what the other person's talking about. And that's why I just keep going and going because y'all – Here's my thing. First, of, there's there's only one place 
that has healthy comments uh, that has a healthy comment section and that's on the lo-fi youtube videos yeah that's so you know funny. like you know like those videos where it's like oh you know whatever type of chill mix perfect for relaxing and studying or that, or because I listen to a lot of video game soundtracks, Skyrim, Zelda, et cetera, et cetera. Yo, Donkey Kong got some bangers. Yeah, bangers. The only soundtracks that I listen to is Final Fantasy Nine and Seven, bro. Like, but like, if you go on these like chill mix comments, like people will comment be like, "I hope whoever reading this finds peace and serenity in your life, and you are loved." They so elevated. Every other comment section, in my opinion, should more or less be abolished. And here, I've said this before. This is how, okay, the platforms are not going to stop spam, okay? They would have done it already. Here's how you do it. Every time you post a comment, you have to do the shit with the tiles to confirm you're a human being. That's what... um Elon Musk is trying to do for Twitter. For every single comment, okay, so it's going to be a pain in the ass, but most of the comments that people post that's not even spam, like they shouldn't be posted anyways, you know what I'm saying? So that's another deterrent. <laughs> yeah, it is. And like, then that's going to stop fucking these random spam bots. Every single comment, you have to confirm your identity when you hit post. I mean, confirm you're a human being. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but then a lot of things people want to say in like as a anonymous person because they don't got the balls to say it. A I mean, lot you of could, racist you could, shit too. You could be anonymous; you just got to prove you're a human. But if I have to do that, it's like well, if I got something to say, it better be worth it. Because I don't like I don't like doing that capture shit for important you, stuff. You know, you, exactly. No, what you mean? Like. You you might you might try to log in and, and do your taxes. Yo, those online, letters are like fucking websites and shit. Some of them shits are like annoying. It's like you can't even fucking tell. I got to go through like three times. Like, was that a lowercase W, or oh, was that okay, a okay, fucking I six? I don't know. But so then it's like I'll I'll, I'll type out a comment. I'll get to this capture. It'll be difficult, and I'll give up. I'm not even gonna post it. Like fuck it. Except the only exception would be if there's no characters in the comment, if it's just emojis, you know what I'm saying? You want to drop some fucking flames underneath the picture? (laughs) Because if a spam is dropping only emojis, like it's not even spam, it's just emojis. Emojis ain't never hurt nobody. Well, I mean, you know, they can still. You never know. I mean, you can get a whole bunch of bots to just drop emojis. It's kind of still But emojis is emojis, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to be like, oh, do I have the sexiest videos on Instagram? Oh my God! Since my Instagram <laughs> handle is at from Shrooms, actually my handle on everything. Yeah, you know how much fucking the Shroom bots are fucking insane. Yo, <laughs> everybody. Soon as you say Shroom in a comment, you get like fifteen. Everybody comments. that follows me, funny. caught my shit. Caught my shit. Everybody, like I get, I get these follows from like pages that have like fucking like ketamine, and like all types of shit that's posted on the page. Everyone that follows me be like, bro, I have fucking like twenty five follower requests from like. You know these motherfuckers selling uh, cocaine and and what? psychedelics and pills. Oh, I like fucking post it, just because yeah. there's shrooms in the name. Yo, every time I tweet someone, like within three <laughs> seconds, someone replies to my tweet. Mm, you want the best shrooms? Go hit so and so. Yeah. So funny story. I was at the farmers market. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the farmers market like two weeks ago, and. I went to this little stand, and this dude, first of all, you see the dude, you know he's on some some other shit. He's like, he got all the colorful tattoos. He's got, like, all the 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 the, the, the tribal garments and shit. And he's selling, like, homemade truffle spices, right? So we bought some some truffle salt and some 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 truffle habanero, and the spices is lit. And then he whips out some honey. He's like, yeah, and I, I got this uh, this magic mushroom honey, too. And then he just, like, casually said it, and then he moved on to the next spice. I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back to that last thing. So he pulls out this jar of honey, and apparently you can infuse psilocybin into honey. Do you have any of that left over? Wait a minute. How do you know how much you're taking? That's the fun part. <laughs> Yo, the way you said, wait a minute. <laughs> 
So I'm, I, all, I'm all for fun, but for, with shrooms, man, that's a, that's a dangerous route. So it's, I guess the honey is designed more for people that like to microdose. Okay. I've I've never I've never really been into that. Um, Yo, because microdosing is about it's like opening up pathways. It's not about tripping. Is it's like you know that feeling when you're a little bit stuffy, but then you know you like go to the sauna or you take a hot shower, and then everything is just fucking flowing. You know what I'm saying? You could just through the nose, like that's how it feels in your brain. You're like unstuck. That's how you know, like there's billions of, you know, neurons and neural pathways. And it's just like they just like rerouting and relinking them up. And you just feel like this mental clarity. So I know a couple CEOs that they 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 microdose regularly because it helps them think through hard problems. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. But and I don't that, really like microdosing because it's, it's to me, it's like smoking weed in a sense. People do that to think through problems too. And you know, it's also different strokes for different folks. Yeah. And there's a lot of memes about this too. But it's like it's like for me, it's like uh when you think you microdosing, but <laughs> but but then you start seeing the fucking <laughs> fractals and, and I'll be at work like, oh fuck, not again. That happened to me <laughs> once, bro, and I had to like oh like, all right, I'm tripping. <laughs> And I was in the bathroom, bro. Every time I go in the bathroom is when the shrooms hit me the hardest. It's just like, I don't know what it is about bathrooms, bro. But it's, it's the mirror. I don't even be looking in the mirror. It's it's like the lights and shit. I don't know, bro. I don't know. The mirror you, is freaking Yo, me at, at night time. I try to stay away from it. Yo, because <laughs> your pupils are so dilated. Have you seen the... Have you seen the lights at nighttime? That sounded like a really like, <laughs> <laughs> like like a hippie thing to say. Have you seen the lights at night? Nah, but because your eyes are so dilated, it's like they go fully. Like every light source is like the fucking like star of David. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like you see the wavelengths because your fucking eyes are all the way open. What the fuck? So like I'll be in the car and You drive on that shit? I'm about to say you're incredible. (laughs) You're absolutely incredible. You're on another level, bro. Nah, like um you know, like like riding in the car. (laughs) Shit. And it's like the shit's passing me by. It's fucking incredible. Like, it feels like I'm on, like, a journey. Like, I'm not just in the car. Yo, like, everything's better on shrooms. Here's what I do. I go to the movie theater on shrooms in the very, very preliminary. Or I'll even eat some food at the movie theater, and then they'll be kicking in, like, halfway. And then that's when it's really seamless. When real life and the movie blur together. It's it's like my own what movie personal augmented reality. What movie did you watch? Let's see. Uh, okay, so the first time I did it was Spider-Man. The second one. Um, Ray Fights the Vulture, Home, Homecoming. Okay. Okay, here's the thing. And it kicked in around halfway? I thought I was Spider-Man. Like, I wasn't just watching him fight the vulture. You were him. Like, for all intents and purposes, what the fuck? sensation-wise, like, I was there. You fought the vulture. And then, like, I was watching it because I, I had, like, the big-ass TV. And then I got the ceiling fan, and the AC was going. So he's fighting the vulture on the airplane. And it's like the room literally melted away. And just, like, the sound of the AC was just the jet engine. It was like... Like I was, and then the craziest part is, damn. But what if you were did he? What if you were losing at that point? Would that be <laughs> a bad trip? Yo, here's the thing. <laughs> I I watched the Batman on like seven grams. Oh, you're fucking insane! Wow. Bro. And yeah. it's for so I'm scared of that. I'm scared of past five, bro. But it's like I feel like I could handle it now. But go ahead, my bad. 
So, like, first of all, just without getting, like, intellectual about it, it's fun. Okay? And, oh, the thing I was going to say is, like, you know how shrooms, so it's, like, it's, like, you know how you lose your uh, perspective? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just could be kind of, like, disassociated with your personal perspective. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's like when you watch a movie and you're like, you you know, you gain the perspective of the movie, you know what I'm saying? It's not like neutral. Ego loss, yeah. So it's like when the movie ends, I really think like, like not on some schizophrenia shit, but well, like. I say that can also, what if you think from a villain's perspective and you gain that? I mean, it hasn't happened yet. Hey, man, let me not fuck your head up, then. Because when you get around seven, you can possibly get ego loss. But see, like, at that point, it wasn't even about the movie, okay? Because I was just fucking out of there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was beyond the movie, beyond everything. Yeah. Like, I was actually with Hiram, and he was like, oh, like, what? Like, he looked at me. He was like, what you think? And I was like, <laughs> He's like, like, think? <laughs> yeah. They said when you take seven, you just, just lay the fuck down and just experience, bro. Don't do shit. Yo, know, I couldn't even talk. I was just making noises. <laughs> so I'm all about the shrooms life, but I've only tripped once. And I've never done it recreationally. Like there's there's too much in it for me to for me to like waste the trip. That's I feel you. That's where I'm at right now. Like, I'm sure, like, eventually, like, you know, if, if, if how, I just well, got a, a How fridge, was your trip? Man. <laughs> it was bad? It was phenomenal. Good, good. It was amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm already a really cerebral guy, and I, and I like to understand, like, the mechanics of, of the process. Same. So everything was super vivid for me. Like, I, I got some deep insights into my core operating system. I was able to untangle some shit. Same. I lost all my insecurities my last shroom trip. That was the most insane shit. I didn't even really know I had insecurities, so that was kind of dope. I wanted to talk to aliens or or whoever. I had a different experience. I looked at the moon. I was like, this should look kind of fake. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a projection. My trip was kind of different, though. That was my first one. That's why I said I was kind of spooked. And I'm thinking about shrooms. It was like four of us. And we all had, we all seen the same shit. And I was like, how is this a psychedelic if we're all seeing? Yo, I, I've heard that I think, uh, fucking my boy Sean knows about that shit. It's, it's, a, it's a term for it. So you think for, we're for all. shared experiences? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I think that's what like shared experience. It's something like, it, like that. Like it, like it, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Okay. Because I was like, that started making me think shrooms was on a different level. Like this might have been like an, like a different opening of ourselves that we we're connecting on. But I, I think that's what it does. I think that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Well, like from like a practical standpoint, like the biggest benefit, and like in my opinion, is because we're in, like our mode, you know what I'm saying? Like we each have our own life experience and like in in a sense like we're, you know, like a slave to our own desires, you know what I'm saying? And then cuz everybody has their own perspective. Mm-hmm. But then on shrooms when you have like go through like ego death and shit and you like disassociate from your perspective and then you can, like, see that same information, but not through your own lenses. Just from the... And then it's like you can draw completely new conclusions from what you already knew. (laughs) What the fuck? Because Mm -hmm. as you, you're going to interpret things as yourself. So, like, with this, you can, like, honestly evaluate what you already know and find brand new fucking things, brand new solutions. You know, like, like it's like the shit with your insecurities. 
that's like you saw them through like not your own eyes and that's why they were like devalued because you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cuz some some of the shit that you like as you were saying don't exist. You kind of just made it way heavier than what it really is. Mhm. So so Shoons is basically good for like helping you shed a lot of that baggage. Great. So like a lot of baggage that you carry that you don't need to carry. But it's just in your hand, and you've been carrying it for so long that you forgot that you're carrying it. Yeah. And the shoes is like, yo, 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 what's in your hand? It's like, yo, that's just my hand. What are you talking about? Oh, Unclench. shit. That's a bag in my hand. Unclench. Unclench. Yeah. Name of this episode. That was dope. <laughs> that was a dope conversation, guys. I'm actually show all my friends this part. <laughs> right here, y'all. That I've always wanted to tell them, but every time it, it sometimes I'm like, I don't know if that made sense. The hardest thing for me is that there's experiences I've had on shrooms that I don't think I'll ever. No, I don't think. I know I will never be able to articulate what I saw. That's like I don't have the words for it. Like I experienced these amazing things. I'll never be able to explain accurately like what I saw or what I felt, but I remember it. Yeah, and you know, I guess <laughs> that's what's important. I only seen like some crazy shit once, and no, nah, it was twice. So one thing when I was saying like how I was like how the fuck, I remember we were by like a pond, right? And at first we were looking out in the pond, there was nothing in there. Then it was a dolphin. Now, my homie is talking. I'm not saying anything, but I'm seeing it, and then he's saying it. He's like, bro, is there a dolphin right there? And I'm in my head, I'm like, I'm like I just thought the same shit. Is there a fucking dolphin in this pond? Bro, this dolphin turned into, like, a fish or some shit, right? Then it turned into a bird. Then it turned into a whole bunch of dunklings. And no cap. Like, there was a girl there. She started freaking out because it was coming closer to, like, the um, – because we were at a golf course, right? So, you know how the golf course has got water. So, it was coming closer to, like, where we were at. And then the ducklings came out and started walking on land. They, they were real. So, I was like, how do, all, how do we all experience that same fucking transformation of this dolphin into these fucking chick like, these chicks? And that's when I was like, bro, shrooms might put us on a different wavelength that we all connect on. And that's when what you just said sounded kind of dope to me because that's kind of crazy. Yo, because it's like when we start getting into the to the nitty gritty, you know, but, like we, we experience things on different frequencies. But wouldn't that make it like, I'll start to think, what, is shrooms even drugs then? Well, what is drugs? What does that word even mean? I would say drugs is like an alteration of... Yeah. Well, well, it's like the word drugs is is a very it's more than anything it's a buzzword because like when when you get into like what is it because like when you say drugs you know like like if you know if you like took a poll in the street like what is drugs like someone's gonna say like meth heroin mm, oxycodone mm. but it's like when you get it down to like brass tacks you know like dr- like caffeine. Is a drug like shit in the food? So is this a drug? Are I would you? so for my definition, I'd say anything that alters you chemical wise, like your chemical makeup. If that makes sense. That's what this does. Well, like like it's not even about it's not yeah. even, it's not even about like what really? is drugs. That's like it's if, a stimulant. You know, like if we go yeah. and look it up, like we can see the exact definition, like what is and what's. It, it's more about what's socially acceptable you know what i'm saying yeah it, it's it's more that's about like to, that's like to know what the, that's like a drug in a capsule is like socially acceptable from the pharmacy or the doctor or you know uh a beer in a glass is socially acceptable it's like like it mm. but the definition kind of like what i said but then that he's absolutely right because it says a medicine or other substance which has a psychological effect when in, ingested or otherwise introduced into the body. 
Sugar does that. And you know what I'm saying? It's like stimulant. Exactly. So it kind of makes you kind of rethink this whole this whole drug thing. Hey, y'all got to prep me if I'm going to come here and get enlightened out here. <laughs> Shit. I mean, you you already light skin. Some high thoughts I, I, right I, here, y'all. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how much lighter you could go. I'm dark skin on the weekends. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That'd be nice. You said. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get us to the deal. No cap, no kizzy. That's what the young folks say nowadays. <laughs> Yo, it's um, <laughs> what is drugs? I love that question. What is drugs? I want to put down a t-shirt. For real, yo. And that, we, that would be a dope like video of people walking up and really asking what they really think it is. Because if you said that, that would mind fuck a lot of people. And and these same people are, uh, drink alcohol and they're like, yeah, it's not drug. <laughs> so basically, drugs is what is those what are people the on Twitter that be commenting is. too. Exactly, yo. There's such a big disconnect um going off the clip i posted that i was referring to earlier with anthony when he was talking about people are more uh so concerned with being right uh from whatever the dave Chappelle quote let me tell you i'm wrong all the time and it's fucking liberating yes as you can see look when you hit me with that i accepted this new information i'm actually like intrigued by it when I like learning though, so I remember though the feeling of wanting to be right. And it's like so much pressure. But and like there's such there's such a big <laughs> fucking disconnect between between like facts and opinion because motherfuckers think, oh, like this is that. And that's fucking law to them. You know, you could even... It's it's crazy. Motherfuckers don't want to be wrong. They're so attached to what they already think. But being wrong is liberating. And there's no fucking shame in it. The smartest people know what they don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The more wrong you are, essentially, you're, the more right you are because you know the... The right answer more, cause you failed more. People who don't, the people who know the most shit didn't know, so they figured it out. And then when they didn't know it all, they figured it out more and more and more. Trey, get this kid a fucking deal. Somebody get this guy a deal, son. Well, I still gotta ask that question. <laughs> what is your top five anime? Top five anime. Please don't put Hunter in there. Hunter Hunter. Not Hunter yes. X Hunter. Hunter Hunter. The X ain't part of the title. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just a graphic. Yeah, like I, I remember reading about like the explanation behind that. Yeah, like it it's not like the letter X. It's just like uh, a symbol, just separating. I kind of treat it like like six lakh. I know it exists, but I still do like. <laughs> <laughs> I read that too. I read that too. That's, that's why when you correct me, I was like, "He's right." That's funny. It's that, still gonna come that's out. That's like he's right. That's like <laughs> e- even though I know like what's right, you know, like I still I still say low, even though I know it's laugh out loud. Oh, like it's, it's it's just a sign no, of you're, my. It's, you're just a troll. It's a sign of my. Smith. All right. Before we continue. By the link Hunter with, X by the link with Oomph Hunter Hunter, I got you. Hunter Hunter is one of the greatest animes that only has been. two legit arcs. Two high quality arcs. Chimera. Okay. And uh Phantom X arc. So Hunter Hunter is basically like halfway through this is like five seasons into Naruto. Not Shippuden. Like that's how that's how much of the story was actually developed. Okay, pause. Five seasons into Naruto, Third Okage is already dead. Tuning exams already happened. A lot more things happened in those five seasons than in Hunter. 
a lot if you really think about it. The, this, the strongest Nen user in the world is already dead. Sasuke already left the village at that point. Five seasons in? Yes. I think this. I'm six, tripping. I'm tripping. Two, yeah. and, two and a half seasons in. And it's a hunter? I thought the beginning was kind of slow. They had that long ass like exam. Uh, like the entrance exams, they would they that, yo, that the an, the, an, the entrance exam. I actually really enjoyed that. I did too. It dragged though, but I did too. Just because of Killua, bro. I loved Killua. And it, it, it's like every, it's like every time they killed my favorite. They they destroyed him too. It's like the every Kamara every time art. something ended, and you learned a little bit more about the world. It was like a whole new set of rules. Would you, know, you uh my back go ahead. But yo, know, the Chimera and Arc, just That's just in its originality, I think is unparalleled. Cause they they did a great job with Gone on that arc. Not only that but they destroyed Kill You What just to do that. That's my problem with with certain enemies. Like not, with Vegeta. Not only that But but that's Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, when it came down to it, because, you know, you're watching something and it's like the good guys got to win. And in this scenario, it was like humanity's got to win, right? But it's like they took it all the way to that point where it's like, you like, you remember when it came down when, um, what was the King Ant's name? I don't remember his Fuck. name. But you remember... The, when he started playing the board game with the blind girl mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he had that personal growth, it was like to the point where like they were fighting, you know, they were, uh, what's his face, the leader of the shit, the old man was going to kill him. Netero? Yeah, Netero. When they told his backstory, that's when I really became a fan of the show. Oh, yeah. You gotta put me on that. So I mean, they, they they did it in the show, like when he was on his way to 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 see the ant. But it was like morally, you can't even say who who was in the right. It wasn't about good versus evil, or you know what I'm saying. In that last fight, yeah. So my homie just told me this. Do you think the old man won? No. Well, he, well, he lost. He mm -hmm. only he only won. Per se, and he didn't even really win because the king had survived was because he had the bomb inside him. Yeah, which it, which also is the the flower bombs that they had, and the com was also a commentary on uh, atomic weapons being used. Yeah, in the world. So one of the reasons I fuck with that show so heavy is because like I also like studied like meditation and psychology and all that shit. It's like recreationally in my pastime, and uh, so you into like Buddhism a little bit. I fucks with it as a philosophy, same. But Not again, I, I'm more into like the mechanics of it. Yeah, and and I, I'm seeing the parallels between Buddhism, Hinduism, even Christianity. Like basically every animism, every major religion or spiritual philosophy out there. There's there's corollaries in each one. Yeah, and it's framed differently. It's presented differently. But it all boils down to what's ultimately the same thing. And if you understand neuropsychology, then you see the parallels. You're like, oh, these are all different perspectives of the human mind. Mm -hmm. And it's like the closer you get to the human mind, the more you study and understand consciousness, the closer you get to spirituality. Like I'm of the mindset that there is no distinction between the two. The only difference is the language that you're using to discuss it. Yeah. Okay. But yo, you know, I, I've been going through this workbook. It's called uh the Chakras Activity Book and Journal. And it talks about that a lot. And I, I think I think you were you would really dig this. Thanks for recommending. I'm putting that on my list. But um like in meditation, you learn to channel different um different emotional experiences. Mm -hmm. And the highest frequency emotions are supposed to be love and gratitude. But for us, it's anger, hate, well, for us as a mass. 
that's the that's the easiest one for a lot of people to tap into. But the highest frequency is still going to be love and love and gratitude. Really? Yeah. Well, so, wouldn't you see uh, love as the same as hate? I wouldn't. You you would see them as the same. Yeah, because I kind of feel like you can't have one without the other, like light and dark. Well, yeah, there's there's going to be a duality in everything. But do you see light as dark? Yeah. So you're you're all about the oneness then. Yeah, like I see it like yin and yang. Yeah, that's the that's how I see life and death too. I agree. I I I feel like that uh symbiotic relationship of love and hate is really romanticized in media, but I don't think they're necessarily connected. You can definitely hate with a complete absence of love. And you can also hate what you love. Which is what makes gratitude so interesting because what separates it from, from most of the other emotions is that while you're experiencing gratitude, you can't experience any other thing. So, you know, to experience gratitude is really pure because that's like you you could receive something and you know play along you know saying oh thank you but that's like you know, like you don't really care or whatever but that's like when you actually experience like gratitude like you actually feel that way that's actually really authentic because like, like I don't know like I, I I'm just thinking of this right now like based on what you said what about no. No, it's true. Like, like if you, if you have like somebody that's like stuck in like a depressive loop, you ask them, "Hey, uh, just do me a favor, real quick. Name me three things that you're grateful for." And as they answer the question, it breaks the loop, because even remembering that you're grateful for something negates any other emotion that you are feeling. You can't be angry and grateful at the same time. You can't be sad and grateful at the same Yo, time. Gratitude about, is a about, light in the darkness. What about being gratitude or? Being gratitude. What about having gratitude for someone who died? You're still not experiencing their loss. You're experiencing the fact that you had them. Like that's what you're focused on in in the moment as you're experiencing the gratitude. So the sadness will come after, in a sense? Perhaps. If you allow your mind to go there, it'll come after, but you can't feel the sadness and the gratitude at the same time. So it's like a great way to like cleanse your system of whatever emotional residue is lingering. So in in Hunter Hunter, your boy Netero in his backstory, they're like, okay, he he reached a plateau in his journey, and then he just went out into the wilderness one day, and he spent ten years throwing gratitude punches, <laughs> <laughs> like he was just channeling gratitude and throwing a punch, like out in the wilderness. Did it for 10 years, came back to his monastery, and lo and, be- lo and behold, was the strongest fighter in the world. And you got, like, if you're, if you're, if you're versed in that, in that whole school of thought, you're like, yo, that was so clutch how they threw that in there. Okay. But I was going to, that, that kind of stems back to what I said about, like, Demon Slayer with the, the flame do hot tied back into. So I can see why that would be in your top five then. Yeah, and then and then towards the end of the series, you see like the main character sacrifices his life force energy to to gain more power to save Kilo, or whoever he was trying to trying to save. Like basically, he he was trying to save uh the motherfucker with with the weird name with the long hair that was his father's his, friend, his trainer. Yeah, his his master or whatever. But that dude was already dead. That sucks. Yeah. But but you saw you saw how he <laughs> transformed into a grown ass man. Yeah, and are that, you saying uh, that was symbolic? Well, I don't necessarily see the symbolism in that, but like it was hinting at the the various layers that the writer planned on, you know, putting on top of what was already written. Like it was foreshadowing what was to come. Like there's no reason that you would just see the, a flash of that and then it's not relevant for the rest of the series. But he lost his powers. Don't you think that's bad writing? 
I heard he gets his powers <clears throat> back. Well, yeah, with the shit with uh, Killua's sister. Mm. Is, is how he recovers from the hospital. You watch Bleach? Bleach is one of the few that I haven't watched. Oh, bro, it's terrible. What? Top five worst animes of all time for me. Top five worst. I like it. I like it. He's the worst main character of all time, for sure. So I never got it. He's dope, it. though. Is that is that bad to say? He's dope. Like, Bleach is dope. Like, all the Bankais, it's dope shit, bro. But it's terrible writing. Terrible, like, it's a lot. It's a lot. Ichigo just loses all show long. I'm I'm still stuck on the gratitude. <laughs> yeah, that was dope, bro. That was dope. You can't you can't feel gratitude and continue as a selfish person, because you can receive things and not be grateful for them. You know what I'm saying? Like there's people like that. They're just fucking black holes. They just take and take, and they don't give anything back. Like they have um. Like they're entitled. But it's like when you're someone that feels gratitude, you move different because you care about other people. It's not just that you care about people, but like when you think about it, what is what is gratitude really? Oh yeah, like gratitude, you only have to be you could just be That's grat- why my only counter would be sad because uh, like somebody at a funeral would be grateful for, and then like while they're saying all the things they're grateful for, they're just getting like crying and sad because just remembering, and they could be happy too because some things that you're grateful for. Could it, it could be sad because, like say, uh, I ain't gonna say that. Like say, uh, like with my brother, I'm grateful for the last words that he told me, and then when I think about that, like yo, those are the last words is kind of like sad, you know. But those last words were like the most impactful shit anybody's ever really told me. So, in a sense, I don't know. It's like I can be. I'm happy about that because me personally, you know. But I'm thinking of somebody normal. I don't know if somebody has that like mental capacity to. I don't know. That's a great. I'm at. I'm have to like meditate on that. So that was dope. That's the only thing I can kind of think of like to counter that. But it's like, <clears throat> without knowing the whole backstory, I would. I would kind of assume that, like, as you hear those words replay in your mind, at least during the moment, as they're being spoken, you're feeling like a warmth and 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 the love of 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 him and his his spirit in that moment. Mm-hmm. And it's not until that moment passes that that you can connect with all those other emotions as well. But during the moment, it's like it's it's all it's all um, a positive experience. Absolutely, but I think that's. From my perspective, because of how I am. So I think you're kind of similar in that sense, too. So but I'm trying to think of like somebody who doesn't have that power of mental capacity. So or, or emotional. Yo, I, I just kind of brought you all together. I, I just kind of like. Really like this offhand, like introduce y'all like over ramen. <laughs> but, I, but like. I just remembered right now that y'all have never met before today. Yeah. I just kind of, like, took it for granted, like, these people will get along. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the power of spirit, bro. But that's why you get paid the big bucks. Because you see that shit from yeah. around the corner. Yeah. You're the mad scientist just putting the chemicals in the beaker. Yo, it's funny because actually, we actually, like, went through this same... Uh, root in conversation when uh your wife was here with Brandy, where it's like, like I kind of see people in terms of compatibility with each other, like dominoes. That's like you know on on the front, you know, someone might be like a five and a three. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's like for example, like we have we all have anime in common. And, like, there's someone that, like, on on the front, you know what I'm saying, like, they, they might be, like, on the surface, like, a totally, you know, like, they might be in, into whatever, something that's seemingly, like, incompatible with, like, the type of people we are. But, like, they also have, like, like anime. So, like, there's that compatibility, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, like, it goes deeper than that. Yeah, because even, like, this whole conversation itself, I don't talk to people like 
a lot of people can't understand stuff like that. So, or even see, like, I like to speak of it in a way where I'm not thinking from myself, I'm thinking from other people's perspective or out of body experience. And I can't really have that conversation with a lot of people. That's why I'm trying to, that's why I'm trying to ask the question. I'm trying to let it fly. You feel me? Cause like, like one of my favorite <coughs> thing to do is when it's like, it's like, yo, like this motherfucker. It's like if I knew two people and like one of them builds houses, and another them like owns a lumber mill, like, and they both know me, but they don't know each other. Like in my mind, it's like, yo, like these two people need to meet. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, they would benefit from that. But also, kind of like, I think about it consciously now, but because I kind of learned the hard way. That there's also some people who I shouldn't bring together. <laughs> <laughs> because like, uh man, this is a long time ago. Like, long story short, that's like it was these two dudes, so like I had to go to work. And yeah, like just let's I'm I'm gonna just keep it short, like not even get to the backstory, but like I left them with each other. I went to work, like next thing I know, I'm getting like phone calls from both of them. That's like Yo, like I'm on the side of the road. Pick me up, like motherfucker. Put a gun at me, whatever. <laughs> wow, god damn. And I'm like, what? That escalated quickly. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and like, I think it came down to like one of them was like kind of like they were in the studio. Like one of them was kind of like nitpicky. So one of them was in the booth, and like the other one was giving what he thinks is constructive criticism, but the other one was taking it personally. So then it just got like physical. <laughs> uh, I, oh, with, you know with, what? I, I'm remembering with now, music. like. I remember right now, Buddy was doing too many takes. So the other guy was trying to tell him something. And he's like, nah, they're like, this is fucking bullshit. It's my session. I do how many takes I want to do. Like, <laughs> and then he's like, yo, uh, like. With music, I can see it, bro. <laughs> I can see it. Too much ego. Yeah. But that's where you got to have fluid energy around you in the studio, too. Yeah, so like since then, I've been like a little bit more conscientious of like who I introduce, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like. The last thing I look for is drama. And, you know, I've been, like, beyond, like, like, since I turned 20, I've been having less and less and less drama. But it's also, come my boy Kmar just pulled me on to, like, this dude named uh, Les Brown. And, um... He's like, you know, he was talking about, um, like, they've done studies, and your closest friends, whoever they are, like, you'll always earn within, like, two to $3,000 a year of what they are. And he's like, as soon as I found that out, he said, like, I cut off all my broke friends. <laughs> Shit. And, like, that like that's been one of the biggest things for me is is not even like, you know, looking for new connections and this and the third. It's just like losing connections that were just like weighing me down and just pulling me into situations that, that I don't want to be a part of. Yeah, that's my biggest mm-hmm. problem because I'm trying to make it with everybody. That's the problem though. <laughs> like I, that, bro. Like I was too, but like it got to the point. Like, I, I remember how that shit went, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been through a lot of things with a lot of people. And, like, there's a certain point where it's, like, the whole, the whole like, you know, like, writer, like, there's some things that only work in the movies. You know what I'm saying? I felt that. That's, like, yo, like, <laughs> you're like, like, you're my boy, you know what I'm saying? But then it's, like, real life is, you know what I'm saying, and real life hits you in so many different ways. It sucks, but and it's like, bro, like I can't eat loyalty. Yo, I found this out the other day. <laughs> There's this dude that super talented that I was rolling with heavy for a while until like it got too much. Like nothing happened. Just kind of like just kind of split off. You know what I'm saying? I found out the other day this guy is exactly where I left him. And he's a couple years older than me. And, like, he's still in that same mentality where it's like, some, like there's someone he doesn't want to, like, like, at work or they don't like him. 
and he, like he wants to fight him. And I'm like, bro, like when you're in your late twenties, you can't be fucking fighting people no more, okay? That's like that, that's that's a fucking little kid shit. Yeah. There's shit you could do as a fucking little kid, and there's shit that you you could like if you do that same shit as a grown man, like the real life consequences, boy. Not even that, like people just look at you funny, okay? That you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's like you like your mind is mature, like you don't have no more excuses no more. That's why like you can't you can't just keep blaming your problems on on other people and just you got to grow up at some fucking point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people just stuck where they at and they just stay there their whole life. Yeah, it's going it's you can't even sharpen yourself when you like that too. I kind of I don't know. That's what come with meditation too, yo. You kind of Play everything that happened daily, weekly, monthly, and you kind of, you'll get out of that, you know? I was like that as a jet boy. I was fading any, at any moment. <laughs> at any moment. I promise you. Well, I'm, my name was Courtney. I was always little. I was 5'2 in my 10th grade year. So, I had that Napoleon shit for a little Yo, bit. Yo, you had a growth spurt late. Yeah, bro. My sister was taller than me. So, I was that nigga I was with. <laughs> I was willing to fade at any moment, boy. Had to be. Yeah. It was survival for you. <laughs> <laughs> then I said just poof. Now I'm t- six foot with short arms, though. My arms like five eight. <laughs> I know, bro. I was like, damn, everything went perfect with, with the five eight arms. With the little ass weeks, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You still fly, though. Yep. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right, wait. Back with this list, man. What's your other five? I'll accept that, Hunter. That's the only time I, with a camera at. That's the only time I've accepted <laughs> it. Unless you give me some dope shit like that. Go ahead. What, you, what else you got? You got to back up your bullshit. Yeah. All right. Ship it in is definitely on there. <clears throat> Naruto ship it in. And I got I got to uninclude the first half of Naruto. And I, I definitely got to write off Boruto. I dismissed that altogether. <laughs> you, no, don't, but, you don't like the but, first half of Naruto? But did you start watching what? Boruto? Oh wait, let, let's let's talk about the first half of Naruto first. Yeah, what? So it, it it did play an important role, but because it's technically its own series, Naruto is necessary to watch. But if you're older, could he's thirteen, right? So if you're a lot older than thirteen, it's annoying as fuck for a long, long time. Okay, which is like it. That's the reason I just. Recently, in this past like six months, watch Naruto and Naruto Shippuden for the first time in my life. Really? Cause it's because Sakura, bro. That's what it really is. No, it's because Naruto, that motherfucker was so fucking annoying. But for me, bro, with annoying he, characters. He was, he was a fucking loud. It, but if they handled their business, that's the only time He I wasn't think. handling his business. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. No, he, wasn't. he faded Orochimaru on par. No. At 13. No. He did not go toe to toe with Orochimaru. So what did he do, bro? He took out a snake, a legendary snake. He stopped a snake. It's dead. Go rewatch it, bro. He took it out. I'm gonna rewatch well, he, it. He didn't I, take it out. He 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 damaged that shit for life. That that nigga's mouth is still fucked up. Wait, wait, but when are you talking about? In the in the, in the, in the tuning of, exams in the forest of death. Yo, like, I'm talking about even before that when I first tried to watch it. That's like episode 20, bro. Not, like, I'm talking about, like, episode one, two, and three. First five are awful, terrible. Awful. First five is, is, is intro episodes. So, like, I, like, in the past, like, decade, I've tried to, like, watch it, like, three times. And yeah, I couldn't okay. get past it because he's just fucking, tell, he's just fucking a little <laughs> bu- buffoon in a fucking orange sweater just fucking screaming and then getting the shit kicked out of him. See, I'm like, I hate, I hate this outfit. So, look, listen. <laughs> I tell everybody that. Whoever I say, like, watch Naruto, first five. But that's why I give all animes five episodes. Because it's the intro. You got to, like, give the basis of, like, the chakra systems, the village systems, how it work. It's the boring. It's the fluff. So, I... But then after that, it gets it gets gritty real quick. If you think about it. So, like, we're definitely going to... Like, this was supposed to be, like, straight Naruto. But that's, like, obviously, like, there's... Like we got a lot to talk about. Like we can, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to run back 
the Naruto again, but there is a couple things I do just want to say. Like, we got like 10 minutes left. Okay, okay. But it's like, so I just watched it <clears throat> for like the first time, like in completion. Mm-hmm. So like the that first time watch experiences is still fresh for me. Like, that's why I made this a thing, you know what I'm saying? We got to gotta have a, have a Naruto panel. Okay. I got a homie. Got a homie. I got a homie. Bet. The thing about Naruto is that the number one, one of the bet things that make it worthwhile to watch is the payoffs, the emotional payoffs, the plot payoffs. Every, like, everything gets its due. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing that is, like, the character development is great. Like, bro, like shit gets set up and then however many episodes and fillers later, they knock it down yeah. out of the park every time. That Itachi shit was And it, dope. it makes it worth it to watch it. Here's the thing. I don't I'm not, I don't matter the fillers no more because like the fillers is like ambiance, you know what I'm saying? That's like, yeah, like there was times I was like so fucking wrapped up, like <laughs> I need no, but it really fills out the world for you, and they do. This is one of the shows that does a really good job of flashbacks, and it's more than flashbacks. There's whole different storylines along this like timeline. You know what I'm saying? It's not just oh flashback to make shit that's happening right now make sense. They fill out the flashbacks into its own fucking storyline. Like with each generation. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see Kakashi in a flashback as a little kid. Fucking 50 episodes later, you get a little bit more. And then like a little bit more. And then that's its whole it's its whole generation storyline. Yeah. Even Minotos and shit like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, he need you, his own series. Yes, bro. That's my favorite character. Honestly. That's- that's everybody's favorite character. And like this show, like Except for Itachi. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of Itachi. What? Yo, I- Ita- Why? Itachi is the realist. He was solid or whatever, but I'm not I'm not like an Itachi fanboy, but whatever. Continue, continue. Uh, we talk about Itachi later. Sheesh. We can break that down. Unless you want to talk about Itachi now. I guess whatever. There's I- nobody who can beat one Minato in a one on one. Uh, like nobody, not one person. A Madara, no. Yep, he can't even keep up with guy. He was playing with guy. Eight gate. He was playing with eight gate. He survived eight what? gate. Got the only reason guy he only survived. Su- he was only survived. Naruto had the sage power. No, he only survived eight gate because guy for a second was like. Damn, this shit hurt too much. Then he got back focused. So even Madara said, "If I didn't, if I didn't have that second to, to fix this shit, he would have took some damage." Is what he said. He said it would, he would have been dead. Did he say that? Yeah, word for word, he said. Yeah, he I think dead. I think he might have said that. We gonna have to look that up. But I don't know if I want to count that Madara. That Madara was kind of cheat though. Like six pass Madara. Yeah, he was. Because he had he had Hashirama cells and all of that. Yeah, he was op. OP. Yeah, he's definitely OP. But but even in that mode, like he he could sense Minato. Like yeah. even even though he couldn't see him, <clears throat> it's not like he could move faster than him. He just knew where he was gonna be. But with Minato's move, it's not really I'm moving to that spot. It's I'm there. So you can't really predict where Minato's gonna go. Yeah, you can. Well, oh. uh, you can't you can't predict where he's gonna go, but you can predict where he's gonna be. See, two different versions. Because he has to mark the spots first. Mm -hmm. And if he does his, where he just throws a whole bunch of kunais. Then that's when your fighting instinct kicks in. It's like, okay, if I was me to tell where we has a great fight. We got to run a pod back and just fucking get off the debates from the start. Okay. (laughs) Let me me hit y'all with one last thing. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's so much to debate. One last thing. Did y'all know that Naruto was supposed to end after the tuning exams. Naruto was supposed to die. And it was supposed to be Sasuke that it continued with. And Sasuke wasn't going to have any revenge story because Naruto died. 
That could have been interesting. You know, I, I I said the same shit. Nobody agreed with me. I hated Sasuke. What? Up until after the fourth Great Ninja War. No, I mean, like there was, like there was. I mean, everybody hates him though, but I love that. Like movie. it's the fact that he found out Atachi's motivation, and then he's like. I'm gonna burn the leaf to the ground. Yes, they, they don't deserve to, do to live. Not only a few motherfuckers knew about this shit. Take events out on them. He's what? like, no, they all, right, all, like saying, they all have to die. All right, so that's like saying like you lived in Kenya and you had to destroy Kenya because some upper echelons in the United States, like Obama, said kill everybody in Kenya. You're like, I'm not gonna take it out on the whole United States. I'm gonna just take it out on them. United States still made it happen, though. So are we guilty as citizens? What Sasuke was saying was, your happiness <laughs> has happened as citizens because of my sacrifice in my country. That's why he wanted to destroy their happiness. He didn't want to destroy their happiness because they were, like, corrupt. No, it's because their happiness has come from our At sacrifice. the cost of Itachi's and my clan's life. Yeah. So that was his thing about that. So he was legit just holding the grudge. So he said, I'm going to yeah. destroy your shit. It was, it, it was, and then fix it back as the leader. It, it, so it wasn't even a righteous anger. You don't think so? Not if. At some point. Not if he's just holding the grudge. He it, watched his dad uh, and mom die, Initially so. it was a righteous anger, but then it became diluted. All right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to debate you know, this yeah, one I'm time. Saying, I'm gonna yeah. break that down too. I I will say though, I don't think there's been a single show that has made me fucking not even cry, but fucking ball more than Naruto. Like ugly cry. I like yeah. this show just fucking hit me, and I I was just I was just <laughs> uh, that shit brought some shit for me too. Like when he when he first met his mom. That shit brought some some shit. I was like, damn, do I got Yeah, I got I got problems? goosebumps. I got I, goosebumps. I, I got goosebumps right now, just remember. I got goosebumps. Yeah, bro, and, and when they finally heavy. told us straight up that Minato was his pops. Yeah, bro. That shit hit I heavy. Was like, I was like, and he punched Minato. <laughs> like, damn, bro. I went through a lot of shit. Minato was like, you right, bro. My bad. That's what I'm saying. That Na- shit definitely was like, like Naruto shit. pays you back for everything. Oh yeah. It's got the some of the biggest emotional payoffs. Somebody on ever. I send you a video on TikTok. But like, in in line with that though, one of the biggest valid criticisms of Naruto is they have a whole plot line with Kabuto growing up in the orphanage. Why the fuck is this little messy ass kid have his own apartment with no state appointed guardian? Who, Kabuto? No, Naruto. Oh. Like, they established that there are orphanages in the leaf. His dad is a freaking mi- Hokage. No, but I'm saying it's like, this kid is an orphan, okay? Yeah. Give him his own apartment. When Kaka- yeah, but he's not a normal orphan. <laughs> but but hold on, hold on. So, apparently, the Hokage, the third Hokage, he, he did that for, for a bunch of kids. Really? Apparently. Because if you if you watch past Sippin and you go into Borzo, they reveal that like somebody around Konohamaru's age was was uh the third Hokage's grandson, the one that looked up to Naruto. Yeah. Somebody around his age snuck into the village to murder the Hokage. He was he was like a child soldier. I did actually watch that um that arc. And he I'm caught up in Boruto, by the way. I know, I got through it. Man, you're better than me. It's fucking terrible. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm not caught up at board, so like, but it's tough. I, I see it this, is. and and like the complaint is that um, that's like they made a lot of the fucking heavy hitters from Naruto into bitches, and they're fucking mid as fuck, right? Lee nerfed them. How the fuck? They they nerfed Naruto and Sasuke too. They definitely they definitely did, but it, more. And, and Sasuke it, still hold his own, but and, and it's like Naruto kind of mid. It's, it's, like, it's the writing that sucks. Yeah, bro, Th- that's what it is. But I feel like like Boruto is in the same stages as Naruto. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very juvenile. Like, they made it for a new ge- generation. Like, logically... It's, it's about to get dark, though. Like, lo- like, logically, like, the characters, like, shouldn't be doing that. But it's because they're not main characters anymore. They took those main characters and made them side characters, which, understandably, is upsetting. But that should... But normal power scaling in other animes is they still stay the same. It's just the kids catch up. You feel me? But they made the like instead of saying the same, they brought them down here, and then the kids are still down here too. And it's like y'all getting washed by everybody, bro. So somebody made that same argument to me that like, okay, Boruto's just in the juvenile stages. It's basically like the first few seasons of Naruto, and 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 I get that, but it's not just that. Like even in the juvenile Naruto, like there was some details in there, and the way that they they layered the story, it was deep. Yeah, bro. Also, it, it, Boruto. I will say this is a little fucking cunt. That too. He's a fucking whiny bitch. He's, that motherfucker he's still- has a whole family. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you what it, what it is with Boruto. You know what Disney did to Star Wars? Yeah. That's that's what Boruto did to, to, the, to the Naruto series. Oh, so I feel like I'm Boruto give you guys is, one insight is on Boruto. more of a money grab and less of a fan service. This is, this is the only reason... That made me have some like less hatred for Boruto. So with Boruto, they kind of are prepping us with this. They Wait, want us to feel this about Boruto because they're gonna make him lose everything. Mm. He has everything. They're gonna make him lose everything. So he's gonna eventually be where Naruto is. What Naruto started. Dadless. With everything gone. I mean, they they foreshadowed that in the first or second episode. Too. Like, yeah. like I, I feel like they're making Boruto more of a like Boruto is more has more Sas has more inclinations towards Absolutely. Sas, Sasuke. Absolutely, but you know it's because like the upbringing, you know, what I'm saying is more parallels with Sa- Sasuke. Oh, that's true too. I didn't even think about that. As as in like he's like like Boruto he is in a, is in a prestigious family. You know what I'm saying? But I will say this. That's dope. I didn't think about that. Would you still feel that hatred if you were feeling gratitude that they <laughs> were just expanding the Naruto universe? <laughs> but they're not. <laughs> it's terrible writing, bro. I'm a big thing on writing. That's why it's fuck bleach. <laughs> he, he had to get that shit in. He had to get that shit in. Before he said, before we slide, I gotta, I gotta. <laughs> you like, you like how I, I, I. Almost every episode is nigga has a punchline <laughs> and sinker. I, you, yo, I took a video of that soap uh, shit. That shit was fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's like I took your deepest sentiment and forged it into my greatest weapon against you. Somebody get this kid his own anime. <laughs> <laughs> Give this kid his own anime. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fucking on on that note, yo, we definitely got to run this back. Yeah, three kage got to get back together. You know what I'm saying? Pod kage, you know what I'm talking about? Three kage. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it. So we we got five. You say you got somebody? I got somebody. Let's go. Uh, I will say this though. I got a shoddy. She got a body. I call her Sunati. It's bedtime. <laughs> it's been tough. Shrooms, shrooms. I can never unsee that video, bro. I got a photographic memory and it works in video form. Skyrim with Matthew. And then you got it. You got it. <laughs> that guttural. Bro, he turned that shit off. He's like, all right, bro. <laughs> He's like, stop. That's 